I trust that you had a Merry Christmas with family and friends celebrating the Savior's birth, and that continues today. I bring you good news of great joy. The Lord himself is with his people. He fills his temple, the hearts of his people, through the work of the Spirit because of our Savior God our one and only mediator, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We begin by singing, Christ is made the sure foundation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God. Gracious Father, Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. 
Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, worship you, give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, glory to God in the highest. Almighty God, in mercy, you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin. Transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. There is only one mediator who appeases the righteousness of God, our Savior Jesus. 1 Kings 8, 6 through 13. The priest then brought out the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place the ark and overshadowed the ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside of the holy place. And they are still there today. 
There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in front at Mount Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have indeed built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks. We sing God himself is present. Because the mediator has brought us unity with our righteous God, we mediate for and with one another. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone forgive as the Lord forgave you and of all these virtues put on love which binds them together in perfect un unity let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, 
whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Today's Gospel, Luke 2, 22 to 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you. Please be seated. We'll sing, O Light of Gentile Nations.
remember our catechism, the second commandment, and we join together. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, that we do not use his name to curse, swear, lie, or deceive, or use witchcraft, but call upon God's name in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. We sing, let all together praise our God. name of Jesus, the one who only and alone gives us the grace of God, forgiveness, life, and salvation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. In two weeks from today, Baby Wesley, who has Googled over and watched the son of Mr. Joseph Shirey and Marissa Shirey, will be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sometimes names matter. It obviously mattered because I had heard the name Wesley far before he departed from his mother's womb. That was the name that they were going to give to their boy. It mattered to them. It was important. Then you have the other side of the argument, like Shakespeare, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. You could call it stink wood, and it would still smell like a rose. Sometimes names matter, and sometimes they don't. I remember a couple of relatives of mine who both had were pregnant at the exact same time, they made the fatal mistake of discussing the name with one another that they wanted for their child, though they were three months apart. And one of the relatives took the name and named their child what the other one was going to name them. And that caused a problem for a while. 
because names were evidently important. Kara waking up from the birth of our firstborn when the doctor asked me, what name should I put down? And I said, Anya, Anya Lee Schrader. And he said, well, how do you spell Lee? And I said, just like her daddy, L-E-E. -E. And Kara and her grogginess said, no, L-E-I-D-H. Names mattered to her. Back and forth. We do such things as we live on this earth and children are certainly a blessing from God. But naming mattered a lot more in scripture. You think about Isha, that Hebrew word for woman, taken from man, woman. She was renamed Eve, mother of all the living. And when God changed Abram to Abraham, connecting with the point that from his seed, from his descent, all nations of the earth, including this one, in 2023, would be blessed. That, that renaming was very significant and important. And so too, as we look at this Eight days after Jesus' birth, we would say one week, and we would say seven days. On the eighth day, Sunday to Sunday, counting all of them, Wednesday to Wednesday, counting all of them, Jesus was given his name, Jesus. We celebrate a double holiday today, and we might not even know it. We celebrate the coming of a new year. I know it's technically at 12.31 a.m. P. Pacific Standard Time. But you probably came to church thinking, well, there'll be some kind of message about the new year and God blessing it. It's like other holidays. Thanksgiving for the Christian is a deep conviction and look back at how God has blessed me in every single way, that he owns everything. I'm merely a steward, and yet look at the abundance of riches he has given me. But it's a secular holiday filled with football and turkey for many around us. We as Lutherans have another holiday on October 31st, the Reformation, and how beautiful it is that God, by his grace, Open the scriptures again to put the emphasis where it always needs to be on Christ alone through the word alone that we actually can be sure of our salvation. Because these thoughts are not just human thoughts but delivered to us by God through inspiration that all scripture is God breathed. And therefore I can be confident in God's promises. And yet, it's a secular holiday filled with the devil as a caricature of a horned red guy with a pitchfork and <coughs> witches and goblins, bouncy houses. <coughs> but today, I was used to not really appreciate this Sunday too much. Though a Sunday right before New Year's or New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. And the reason was, I felt like people, even Christians, were treating it, God, like a rabbit foot. Like a lucky rabbit foot. If we start off on the right path for the year, maybe God will bless me in 2024 with the things I want and the type of life I want or the peace and serenity that I want. And if we just start off this way and continually ask and ask and ask, he might grant that. But perhaps the most loving, gracious thing your God could do for you in 2024 is to take that loved one away with you, from you into heaven for their eternal peace and rest and for their crown of victory, and yet that will result in your heart breaking and immense sorrow. 
And likely you will remember 2024 as one of the worst years of your life. And yet, it was your loved one's greatest joy. I used to not like preaching on this holiday, and yet it's a double holiday. Because names matter to God. Did you hear the repetition throughout the reading because it was required by the law, because it was required by the law, because it was required by the law that this must happen? The eighth day, the firstborn, consecrated, set apart, because the law required it. A sacrifice needed to be made. Yeah, a couple of birds, but the symbol was powerful. A sacrifice is necessary because the law requires it. The angel calming down anxious Joseph that his betrothed future wife, betrothed wife, was pregnant. And this didn't happen the way it usually happens. Don't be afraid, Joseph. His name will be Jesus. God placed that name on him for a reason. And as sure as the angel's words, the intercessor from God's mouth to Joseph's ears and to Mary's ears, it had to happen that way because God said it. In other words, his name will be Jesus because the word of the Lord had spoken. God's law required it. We're not talking about lucky new year, lucky rabbit's foot, and abundance of blessings this morning. We're celebrating that baby eight days old, fulfilling what the law requires. To do it perfectly. From birth from conception not for himself but for you to be the perfect human to be named Jesus because it matters the Lord saves the Lord saves his people from their sin What wondrous name is Jesus? I'm glad on Christmas Eve we did not sing Joy to the world. We did not sing Joy to the some. The Lord saved a few. How sad that would be. How sad if to Nicodemus, the expert in the law, God so loved a couple that he gave his son. What if Jesus and his name was limited? Could you ever know it's for you? Could you ever know without a doubt that he is your savior, that he saves you from your sin? To the universal problem, God sent Jesus to be the universal solution. Not limited, but in all the fullness of God that through this Jesus, this baby, already bleeding in his circumcision, the guilt offering was being paid out for the entire world. 
And if you're in this world, that means you. What Jesus did 2,000 years ago was fulfilling perfectly the track record that God demands for you. There is no distinction from the manger to the temple to the cross on Calvary. It was done for you. Because God so loved the world. And you're in it. Because God brought this gift of joy to the world. And it's yours. Oh, Jesus. The Lord saves his people from his, their sin. What's in a name? Pastor. Yo cometí un error. Engañé a mi esposa. Pastor. I committed an error. I cheated on my wife. I was a little slow on the uptake until I kept hearing it over and over again. In personal confession, people would say, I made a mistake. I had an oops. I had a boo-boo. I didn't do it right. The confession was not, I have sinned against the Lord and I have sinned against my wife. It was this light peddling of the law. I don't fully want to own it and admit it. I want you for this morning to think about the person that is your best and kindest friend. That you love. Now think of that person knowing every time you let down the relationship. Your, your best friend what if they knew every evil thought? What if they knew every instance you thought you were justified to get back at them, but you never did anything, but they, they see it. They heard every word you said under your breath. Or those words that you spoke loud but you were off cutting the grass instead of standing right next to them all those times you wanted revenge on them would they be your friend anymore honestly if they knew your inmost being would they want anything to do with you Now hear the word Jesus. Let's think on it. When you think of your Savior, compassion, we would say in English, undying love, but really, dying love. Kindness, unfailing, persistent, patient. No words of bitterness, no desire for revenge. Oh, the wondrous name of Jesus. The Lord saved me. Even me. What a name so powerful. And we can understand then why the world reacts so differently to it. 
to most or many. It's evident the apathy, right? Jesus is a teacher like any other teacher. You can put him right up there with Mohammed and whoever else because he makes my life better, makes me a better person. And I don't really think a loving God would ever convict me for the seriousness of my sin. He would never hold me accountable if he's loving, so I'm not so bad. Just an apathetic touch of Jesus, but not too much, please. But for those who dig a little deeper and see just how divisive Jesus is, as Simeon talked about, the rising and falling, there's a clear-cut line. When people really get to that point and they see with the seriousness of the demand of God, then Jesus isn't a nice person. He's a person who divides. Who never lets people off the hook. Who is better than me and I hate him for it. I hate him. And I hate his people. I'd like him to blot, be blotted out and canceled from society as much as possible. We understand it. But for you, dear Christian, you see the law fulfiller on your behalf. You see the blood shatter on your behalf. Because he has saved you from your sins. Now I know today is a day of celebration. We are passing from 23 to 24. A day on the calendar. Another day of the holidays. To enjoy time with friends and family. We're celebrating a double holiday. Not only the change on a calendar, but the wondrous name of Jesus for you. May it dominate your minds, resonate on your, in your mouth, and inspire your house, health, heart. Not only today, not only in 2024, but forever and ever. In order to tread underfoot the custom of the heathen, our fathers ordained that private litanies should be held at the beginning of January, psalms sung in the churches, and at the eighth hour of the first month, the festival of the circumcision and naming of Jesus, pleasing to God, should be celebrated. We join together in in confession of our common Christian faith. Please stand the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated.
Please stand for prayer. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit as working through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce truth in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and silence, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who are now at rest with their neighbor, with their from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Keep us in the true faith. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Our Father. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing Angel from the Realms of Glory.
Good morning. <laughs> First service I had it in my sermon manuscript. Well, it is in my sermon manuscript. I accidentally dropped it, but I introduced it as saying, I'm not saying as this is the word of God, but it is certainly interesting. If Jesus had received his Hebrew name, it would have been Joshua. If Jesus had received his Aramaic name, it'd be Yeshua. But the writers of the New Testament consistently call him Jesus, his Greek name. Not only because I believe the New Testament is written in Greek, but because that Jesus is universal. He's for all people. Jesus. They, they could have used Aramaic. They used that at, when it was important in the scriptures, like Jairus' daughter, um, when Jesus spoke to her, they record the Aramaic, Aramaic Tabitha, Talutha, come, or Talutha, come. Tabitha, get up, come out. Or Jesus on the cross, they record his words in Aramaic, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. But when they talk about the name of Jesus, it's his Greek name. Savior for all. Savior for you. We have an error in the bulletin on Thursday evening. The time for the second offering of Romans is at 6.30, not at 6 p.m. So if you're a Thursday nighter, 6.30 is the correct time. Enjoy your new year in Christ under his name. Faith, hope, love. I, can I tell you one more thing because I'm early? Do you know that they... Do you know that they used to call your first name your Christian name? Yeah, you remember that? Some people, right? Because that name was given to you, and that name, in a lot of cases, was first spoken by the pastor who baptized. The first time your first name was uttered, historically, was when the pastor said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So those Christians, though human tradition, were saying most important family is the family of God through Christ, not Lo Schrader, or the Schraders, or the Rodriguez family. No, I don't know why I keep thinking in Spanish. Have a great day.